Hi, it's Adam here, and I'm back with a look at a new plugin. Uh, now, it doesn't feel that long ago that um, I was doing a video on Shaperbox 2, but Cable Guys are back again with version 3, which will pop up here. As you can see, it looks a little different from version 2, which I have here, um, with updated interface and a different browser system. They have also filled in this gap down here with a brand new liquid shaper to make nine different shapers in all. As well as the new shaper, they've added in audio triggering, allowing you to trigger any shaper with any sound. Um, the technology from that is taken from the Kickstart 2 plugin, which is also worth checking out. So Shaperbox 2 was already capable of some pretty interesting things, um, but Shaperbox 3 expands that even further. So let's check it out, check out the new features and see what it sounds like. So first, let's check out that audio triggering system. Um, so I've got here a drum loop. Very nice, and that's running through Shaperbox with nothing on it at the moment. What I can do is load up a simple volume shaper. I can come down here and change the mode. It's by default set on sync, so it's just going to be set to the sync to the tempo of your project. Uh, you can also have MIDI, so you can trigger different envelopes with MIDI. I'm going to set it to audio, which is new. Uh, so you see down the tooltip at the bottom there, it says the LFO restarts when an audio trigger event is detected. First, I'm going to choose a shape like that. So that's going to give me just a kind of curve right down. Let's try it, start it right from the beginning. Uh, and let's see what that's doing. So you can see this waveform here. And what that's doing is it's looking at the transients of the kick and the snare in this case, and it's restarting the LFO every time. So we can make that more extreme and make it a bit more obvious. Now, it made that so extreme that it's actually cut out the hi-hat from the loop completely, um, which might be a useful utility thing, um, or you can obviously use that very creatively as well. You can also do a similar thing to trigger the LFO with a sidechain, um, in Ableton you set up a sidechain down here, uh, and then you can use this button to show the external sidechain so you get the actual waveform come up along with the waveform of your audio. What you can also do with the audio input is click this little cog down here to adjust the audio triggering. So you get this really useful visual. You can see exactly where those triggering points are hitting. What I can do is take this down, take the threshold down. And now it's catching some of those hi-hats in the loop as well. And then of course you can adjust this curve as much as you want. The editing of the curves has been improved in this version as well. Um, it's a lot simpler now. You can do things like double clicking and you can drag over sections to move them. Um, this is really just useful quality of life features. So that's a really basic way to use the audio triggering, which is basically acting as kind of transient shaper. Um, but obviously I'm just using the volume, uh, which is the most basic of the shapers here. Uh, and you can use whatever shaper you want to trigger that. So let's have a little fiddle with the same drum loop and do something a little bit more interesting. Uh, if I go back, uh, click across there and get rid of that, what I'm going to do is get rid of this volume shaper. Uh, and let's try, uh, just for now, the liquid shaper, which is the new one. So this is kind of a getting this kind of liquidy sound. It's got flanger phasers in here. And you can switch between those at the top or off. Uh, let's go with flanger. And you've got positive, negative mode, um, things like center and stereo controls. So now I'm going to set it to audio mode again. So it's bringing in the audio trigger. So we'll drag that curve down to something similar as it was before, put a new point in there, make it quite extreme. Make that really wide with the stereo control.
And not forgetting, of course, Shaper Box 3 is also multi-band, so you can drag these across, switch over to a different band, and have a completely different curve and completely different shapers on different bands. Honestly, the flexibility in this plugin now is absolutely wild. Let's have a little go on a different sound. Uh, we're going to get rid of that drum loop for now. Uh, I've got here a lovely uh, kind of... Uh... Lovely chilled out synth line there. Uh, what I'm going to do on this one is just go into the presets. Um, so I really like this new preset system. Um, you've got the showcase, so it's showing you some of the cool new stuff, uh, and then all. Um, and what I really like about it is the kind of tagging system they've got. So these different colors respond to the different uh, shapers involved, so you can see exactly which one each uh, preset is using. Uh, and they're arranged into categories, so let's try something rhythmic for now. Um, let's go for a chop and gate, uh, and then the new ones are new plugins. Um, let's try something out that's got uh, quite a lot of shapers on there. Let's try triplet swing. So this one's using a filter. Um, if I click across, you can see the different curves in each one. A filter, the new liquid, uh, a volume shaper, drive, crush, and a pan. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> That's giving that loop a completely different vibe and completely different feel. Um, and it's doing a lot of different things at once there. It's doing um, yeah, automation on so many different aspects of that sound. Let's jump across um, to another one, kind of more, another another rhythmic one. Um, let's try gated sequence. <laughs> doing some volume stuff some really obvious volume stuff really up and down uh, a nice little subtle subtle filter sweep um, the liquid it's got this kind of liquid and drive jumping in at the same moment in the loop there um, yeah it's kind of kind of combining the the two different ideas of shape box doing really extreme things and really subtle things let's just try a couple more presets in there because there's so many in here uh, and I'm definitely a preset hopper so let's try out a um, You've got more utility things down the bottom, like mixing uh, and enhancing things. Uh, let's try a motion thing. Let's try a flange phase and chorus. Uh, and we can go over here and we can try something that makes use of the liquid. So we can filter that just to green. Uh, you can favorite plugins and you can filter them just to your favorites up here. Um, so let's check out. Now I filtered that to the green uh, liquid. So that's going to, all these ones are just going to be liquid. Um, let's try out a, a just one liquid uh, part on here. <laughs> That one's very subtle, just adding in a little bit of uh, phasing in there. Um, let's try phasey stereo widener. Um, so this one has liquid and a filter. <laughs> So you can see on that, it's making use of the multiband mode. So the liquid, um, there's not huge curves going on, um, but it has got different uh, amounts of processing in involved there. So it's on the low, uh, it's up here. On the mid, it's way down the bottom. And on the high, it's a little bit further up. So it's putting the phaser uh, in different amounts on different parts uh, of the uh, of the signal there. Uh, in fact, on that one, it's off. Uh, and there's a flanger and then a phaser. Um, and there's a filter going on, um, doing different things up there, completely open. And just on the highs, it's taking those down a notch. So you can see, you can do absolutely um, super in-depth stuff with this. Um, you can tweak, you can get creative as, as much as possible. Um, but it's really useful for just basic um, side chaining, um, basic kind of track spacing stuff. Um, but I think my advice is just to jump into these presets and have a lot of fun uh, and go crazy drawing some curves and uh, see what sounds you can make. Shaperbox 3 is out now. Uh, there's a demo available at cableguys.com and check out musicradar.com for more info from us.